Well, hello, that's me again. It is June 22, uh, 2022. It is a sad day uh, for any Russian or former Soviet person because it's the day when the Operation Barbarossa started and Nazi Germany and Axis forces, which are basically unified European forces, invaded the Soviet Union. And everybody knows that, well, not everybody, actually, that's the problem. And the story starts from there, and that's where we're living the closing chapters of that story today, which is, of course, the collapse of the combined West and basically the, uh, how to say, the end of the world and Pax Americana as we know it. And uh, I want to start today with uh, some mixed bag of things like Q&As and things of this nature. Let me start, however, with the simple thing. As you can see yourself uh, on this photo, and uh, this is a uh, U.S. Naval Attaché Captain Samuel Dale uh, in Moscow a few days ago. And as you can see from these two photographs, um, the guy actually behaves himself quite interestingly. He basically shows middle finger to everything what he can encounter from the... Uh, whoever looks at him to the Z uh, sticker on the uh, lamp post somewhere in Moscow. Well, some people say, ah, oh, what the hell, this is a very low class, and I totally agree, it is extremely low class, and that's also the first indication of being a sore loser, and which he probably is, I looked his, uh, look up his biography, he is uh, in, uh, basically some kind of, was an operational officer, but he has a degree in humanities, he is interpreter in language, what have you. So, but the point is, I have to make some, a uh, little bit of clarification on all that. As you probably heard, the movement of the so Russian diplomats in the United States is severely limited nowadays. And unlike it was in the 90s and 2000s, and even just recently, five, six years ago, before Trump and his cowardice, you know, basically started to destroy completely uh, uh, Russian-American relations, including the, uh, basically uh, sending out hundreds of diplomats. And the issue is that, um, obviously, because the movement are extremely limited and you need to basically inform now, for example, Russian diplomats inform, I believe, F uh, FBI, and I'm pretty sure I'm not 100% po po positive American diplomats have to uh, inform FSB how they travel, you know, if they travel between the cities. And that's, of course, uh, to say the least, inconvenience. And uh, obviously, as you might expect, and uh, this is uh, officially confirmed by, for example, Russian uh, ambassador uh, to the United States, uh, who stated that basically they try, you know, unceremoniously to, you know, shove those, the business cards of FBI and other intelligence agencies to each of the, uh, uh, basically, uh, employee of Russian embassy whenever they go to work in the morning. Well, uh, let's not beat around the bush here. Truth is, obviously, FSB, as does FBI, they have the what is called Narushka, in a simplified word of the uh, external surveillance. They follow the American diplomats, and this is American car. This is the car of the American diplomats because it's the red uh, license plate, and uh, United States starts with 400, and this is United States car. So, and I think so, this guy, Dale, c captain, you know, very well evidently educated and cultured, you cannot buy, obviously, culture or history for whatever money you have, he is not so much also shows his disdain and hatred of everything Russian, but behaving like this, he probably tries to signal to uh, FSB Narushka or external surveillance, which he knows is being conducted on him, and he wants to show him his appreciation. Another matter that, of course, even that is such a low class that I don't even know really, but that brings us to a larger issue here, which is, of course, of course, is the fact that 
and I'm on the record, I speak about this all the time, that uh, U.S. diplomatic corps is in the precipitous decline. And I'm talking about not just the diplomatic corps, but people, including the intelligence people, who obviously work under the cover. They just lack, uh, basically, class, culture, and ability to uh, most of them anyway. And I would suggest you to uh, visit... Uh, Larry Johnson, his excellent blog, The Son of the American Revolution, and Larry knows what he is talking about. He's former CIA, and then for many years he was running anti-terrorism program in the State Department. So when he speaks, people better listen. And he talks about it that basically it's these are not really serious uh, intel agencies anymore, and. Um, that brings us to other thing, which uh, very important here, because obviously, uh, as Mr. Peskov stated two days ago in st uh, speaking to the NBC News, that we're, we're not going to trust West anymore. It's over, guys. I mean, there's nothing to talk about. And yeah, when you see behavior like this, hey, I understand you know that you're being followed and things like that. But please, dude, showing middle finger to a poster, good God, I mean, dude. Your parents should have told you how not to be a sore loser for crying out loud, but evidently it's not, it's not the feature anymore of the American diplomatic corps and intelligence corps, which used to be actually professional. Not anymore, evidently. These are just all for the PR and show off. And that brings us to the other thing that, uh, which I wanted to talk to you about, uh, about and this is, uh, 2018, uh, Margarita Simonian uh, writing, this is in Russian, but you can find it at the Saker's blog uh, in the full uh, 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 English translation of that. And the name of this piece in the area, which is a very important uh, Russian uh, uh, news outlet, is why we do not respect uh, uh, the West anymore. It was in uh, 2018, and uh, she uh, actually wrote about the fact that uh, all those uh, uh, pundits were shocked when they understood that basically the majority, not, not only Putin had the sky high, uh, you know, approval rating, which is, by the way, uh, statement and you know uh, assess uh, assessment confirmed by uh, even the foreign uh, uh, agent uh, agencies such as Levada Center, but the fact that basically conservative and patriotic agenda basically won with I mean by a mile uh, in Russia in the parliamentary elections and uh, Simonian. Uh, at that time wrote this, which is a really important thing, because I have to quote it for you. Um, and that's what she thought, uh, her address basically was towards the combined West, not to, to Russians. And here it is. I've been telling you for a long time to find normal advisors on Russia. Sack all those parasites. Well, what can I say? If you read uh, my uh, blog and my books uh, and listen to what I'm telling you for many years now, many, it's all about the fact that uh, Russia's study field in the West is pathetic. It's a wasteland. There are virtually no serious uh, Russia study scholars anymore in the United States, especially. Most of it is crap, and most of it are those parasites, and primarily Russian dissidents and Russian uh, emigrants who say to so-called scholars and academy and intel people in the United States what they want to hear. Obviously, they do not provide reliable data, and that is why United States and uh, the combined West with NATO, they cannot find their own ass with uh, both hands in the brightly uh, lit room because they have no idea. And that brings us to this funny issue, which is, of course, uh, uh, just confirms what Simonian, but again, I was much earlier on that, um, speaks about. Here it is. I mean, uh, as you can see yourself, uh, Olga Lautman, obviously, the, uh, uh, she is a Jewish uh, emigre and who graduated some kind of crop and finances and what have you, 
and who is actually Kremlin focus analyst. That means she has no clue what she's writing about. But she was caught obviously using the Russian analog of the onion as the uh, basically foundation for her post and showing how bad situation in Russia is. Obviously, by the time she figured out that it was a hoax and it was actually a joke, it was too late, obviously. But that shows you, including with this guy Neville Attache, you know, uh, Samuel Dale and that, that's the people who advise on Russia. So, basically, they are parasites, they know shit, basically, they are badly educated, and they might know Russian language. But that also brings us to the other thing, you know, and especially... Uh, when people ask me, and if you read my first book, I make the, um, uh, basically the uh, reference to uh, actually uh, Colonel Lang, uh, and uh, he uh, admitted when he was studying in the intelligence schools in Garmisch in Germany, <coughs> and it was in the 60s, and he had the guy who taught uh, Russian, and some giving some Russian uh, exposure to them, who was former white officer. And most of those officers, as he stated, they didn't just hate Bolsheviks, no. They, obviously, they hated communism, they, whatever was, you know, perceived as communism, which it was not, actually, in the Soviet Union, but he hated Russians, being Russian himself. So you can imagine what he was teaching them. So that's no problem, isn't it, to understand that in the end, they just basically run a complete baloney, uh, which passes for uh, analysis and historical, uh, basically, introspective on Russia. And yeah, when you look at this, and I, I'm on record again, I'm sorry, it's a basically barren, barren field. It's... Uh, it's not academic, it's not serious, and uh, that's why pe many people don't understand that when you look at the famous uh, Gulag Archipelago by Solzhenitsyn, and I deliberately uh, underlined and uh, highlighted it in yellow, you have to understand that when Time writes best nonfiction book of the 20th century, it's goes without saying that morons at the time magazine don't understand that Gulag Archipelago is 90% fiction. And that's why it's called, uh, as you can see yourself, this very classic Solzhenitsyn-ified uh, slogan to say the half-truth, but that's what it is. An experiment and literally investigation. What is literally investigation? It's fiction. But I'm not saying that there was no gulag. I'm not saying that there was no repression. I'm not saying that there were no some crimes committed. I'm not saying that the uh, innocent people didn't die. No, abs absolutely, gulag did exist. The repressions happened, and things of this nature. But what uh, Solzhenitsyn described, and all those so-called scholars, including, as you can see yourself, this psycho of uh, uh, wife of Mr. Sikorsky, an Applebaum, a fanatical neocon and Russophobe, writes the you know the uh, word forward for this uh, basically junk which uh, passed in the West for basically a uh, documentary, uh, is the fact that it wasn't anything like that what was described by most of the uh, Gulag dissidents and things of, and people of this nature. Gulag this exist, yeah, there were some absolutely horrible things which happened, but the scale was actually two orders of magnitude smaller. And obviously the whole number of people who perished in Gulag, including those who have been executed, it's not even what, again, if not three, uh, you know, uh, uh, orders of magnitude smaller than what have been described. This doesn't mean, you know, we shouldn't uh, basically um, not condemn. But of course, we have to condemn and, you know, uh, uh, many, uh, many people who committed uh, those things. But Gulag was primarily actually not a political thing. It was just a regular uh, combination of the colonies. Uh, basically, it was actual penitentiary system. That's what it was. And obviously when Robert Thurston writes books about it, that there was no the gripping fear for repressions in the Soviet Union at that time. Nobody's, uh, all those so-called scholars and bullshitters, they run immediately, you know, he has a, no, no, everybody was just terrified and things of this nature. No, they were not in the Soviet Union. So, but it's a long story short. I'm just saying that's the quality, quote unquote, of the so-called Russia study, which we uh, observe today in the West. And those people even complain 
complete delusion. They don't, they don't understand the country, they don't understand people, even when they know language or even when they are uh, basically uh, have their roots in Russia, be them Russian, Jewish, Lithuanian, what have you, I mean they are here, many of them, not all, believe me, but I would say 80-80%, many of them here are to settle accounts when they get themselves involved into the uh, Russia study field and uh, like Rebecca Koffler, which is hilarious, she wrote a hilarious book, uh, having degree of the teacher of English language and then somehow ending up in the Intel community, so to speak, when she says, she says that, oh yeah, I was born in Kazakhstan and Soviet Union, I know strategic culture of the Soviet Union and Russia. No, she doesn't because she never had the access to the classified materials and especially form 1a so she has no clue what she's talking about despite the fact that she wrote the book about how putin is about to basically conquer the uh, world and destroy american democracy so that's the quality of the people so uh, and it is that in this particular case i agree with margarita simonian i disagree with her on many issues but here i agree with her completely they are parasites they abuse their senior course i mean as long as they pay they will tell you whatever the uh, powers that we want to hear and yeah that's what they do they tell them exactly what they want to hear that russia is about to collapse that russian armies uh, uh yeah by uh, con uh, concluding today and surrounding completely another lisi chansk grouping uh, which is completely closed now uh, that's how you in accordance to their uh, uh, basically logic that's how you lose and that's uh, when I want to go to a little bit uh, of the short QA here. People ask me, how long, you know, uh, Russians and uh, basically Donbass and Donetsk will tolerate this uh, fact that they're being shelled and not being annihilated? I repeat for armchair strategists, for people who do not understand how wars are fought, especially such a complex war, as this one the explanation is very simple russia could turn that goddamn place in avdeevka and around it in parking lot in no time it would take about a couple of hours by conventional weapons and nothing will be standing there but what they do not understand and i give you the first hand accounts that if you look at the Avdeevka and those cauldrons from where the shelling of Donetsk uh, continues, you have to always keep in mind they hide behind civilians. And even people in Donetsk, this is the first hand uh, 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 basically experience. They say, yeah, we need to suppress them and all that, but then they say, yeah. One daughter says, my mom lives there. Yeah. And she says, as much as I have emotional response, you basically have the people, half of them are relatives. So do you want that uh, a Russian army will just flatten the whole goddamn sp place? What, what do you will tell those, those people in Donetsk whose relatives, majority of them are relatives, will die there. Not to speak about the civilian uh, uh, deaths, unnecessary civilian deaths uh, to speak of. That's the simple uh, thing. That's what uh, Anglo-American tactics is, to hide behind the uh, civilians, using them as human shield. And you have to literally peel things off. And that's actually how brilliantly this war is executed. It's not as fast, but you know what? Imagine anybody who speaks uh, about this. Oh yeah, let's flatten it. Let's send uh, 100 caliber missiles and see what happens. Sure, we can send do that. We can also, you know, provide the horrendous you know, artillery barrage. And yeah, that will be absolutely the, you know, moonscape there. After that, the problem is how many civilians will die? How many of those civilians have relatives in Donetsk? Very many, majority in fact. What will be, so it will be tragedy not only for those civilians on the other side, it will be the tragedy for many people in Donetsk and Donetsk area themselves. And so that you have to face those simple realities. Now, the other question uh, about this Lithuania thing. Guys, uh, again, uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, yes, I already on record and I speak about this chest thumping. These are desperate measures, uh, the same as, you know, this uh, Neville at Ashe showing middle finger to uh, 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 Sticker and, you know, to anybody who follows him. Uh, let's face it, uh, 
uh, uh, nations and alliances of nations which uh, are you know winning and uh, basically uh, uh, feel comfortable uh, and feel confident about their final result uh, they do not do that I mean and obviously the Lithuanian it's a pipsqueak it's basically a nation with virtually without any economy which most of it lives on the uh, European Union handouts and uh, transit so uh, they are not doing this themselves just just themselves although there are many nut jobs there enough to mention you know even those Landsbergis uh, people who still you know just consider this guy from 90s you know their uh, furor of sorts but no it's primarily London and secondly Washington DC they have no other means anymore to do anything and they know they begin to feel especially <clears throat> that the voices of competent people militarily competent people especially in Washington DC are beginning to be heard that they're losing it they lost the war Ukraine is done I mean we just have to look at the reality of this it's just grinder the uh, Russia just basically grinds into the mean smith all those uh, uh, and I uh, sorry I'm sorry to say this yeah they, those are even unprepared uh, soldiers in fact is there are in the, this latest cauldron it Lysychansk, Severodonetsk and uh, those other places you have literally barrier troops I mean those Nazis they execute anybody who thinks that uh, who runs back or who wants to surrender to Russians so and uh, in this particular case what can Russia do first Russia already have one large uh, ferry there are few other smaller ones but it's a one very large ferry which was built actually by Turks because because Russian uh, uh, shipyards are extremely busy building other things but I would expect within the two to three years to have a very large uh, ferry uh, uh, communication line of communication built around and there is a Baltic fleet which can make sure that nobody even thinks stupid things and of course it's not as uh, economically effective as that would be trains but Russia will bypass this and then will just basically kill uh, Lithuanian economy so and we have to even consider the fact that uh, will EU exist by then I don't know so most likely not you know not in the present shape anyhow so it's it's a solvable but yeah Lithuania will pay horrendous price and but no nobody is going to attack it you know why I mean what for so at least it's not there yet so while there is obviously some leverage on economic leverage on Russia but yeah just to understand give you understanding what is going on and that's a wowser that's a front page news and Putin Vladimir Putin uh, speaking to people of BRICS today he disclosed that openly yeah BRICS nations work on the new reserve currency and it will be introduced very soon it will be based on the basket of currencies uh, from Russia China India you know and you know so well that's your answer and after that I mean that's the end of European Union and it's the end of American domination not that it uh, haven't been clear before but now we have the official confirmation that yes yes new reserve currency is coming and it will be supported by Russia's military might and obviously by ruble econo economics of ruble itself which is basically now resource-based currency and that's the issue by the way a ruble is so strong now that even people uh, such like Belousov who is a genius economic genius in Putin's um, uh, 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 administration not administration but uh, but actually in government of Mikhail Mishustin who says yeah we don't need that strong ruble you know we might go a little bit kind of ease on that because obviously Russian economy is not doing that bad and uh, so that's what I wanted to talk to you about today and as always uh, it's a mixed bag you know but as always those who are uh, like what I do please subscribe to my channel and those who can afford please support me on patreon and um, that's what I wanted to uh, talk to you about today and uh, uh, guys have the nice rest of the week and week and I'll talk to you later then bye bye